This picture was taken in August of 1945. It shows a nuclear bomb exploding over Japan. At the end of the Second World War, two such bombs were dropped on the towns of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, less than a week apart. Nobody knows quite how many people died in the blast, but it is estimated to be around 250,000. How could such an action be justified? Hello, and welcome back to RS and 5 or Less, contemplating the fragility of life for just a moment. The United States decided to drop two atomic bombs on Japan. This forced the emperor to surrender and thus ended the Second World War. Because of this, it is often seen as justified. This number of people, 250,000, were dying on average every week during the Second World War. And it could be argued that dropping the atomic bomb would have been the greater good if it shortened the war by only eight days. This is because more people would have died if the war continued than died in the atomic blasts. It is said that when the atomic bomb was first demonstrated to its developer, Oppenheimer, he quoted from a Hindu text saying, I have become death, a destroyer of worlds. There are multiple arguments for and against the use and possession of nuclear weapons. To have a look at these, click here. Although the atomic bomb was first developed in the United States, since the end of the Second World War, Almost a dozen nations have developed their own nuclear weaponry. Today, there are estimated to be 14,500 nuclear warheads in the world, most of which are many times more powerful than the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In the world today, the United States and Russia have the vast majority, some 90%, of the world's atomic weapons, totaling around 13,000. The United Kingdom, France and China have a few hundred each, North Korea, India and Pakistan have nuclear weapons as well, and it is believed that Israel have nuclear weapons, although this has never been publicly confirmed. Some nations have developed nuclear weapons, but since had them all dismantled and are now no longer nuclear countries, such as South Africa. While 14,000 might seem like a large number, it is small compared to how many nuclear weapons were in the world at the peak of the Cold War in the 1980s. This is thought to have reached 65,000 nuclear warheads. Part of the reason for the reduction in the number of nuclear weapons is the Non-Proliferation Treaty. This seeks to limit the number of countries that can have nuclear weapons, as well as the overall number of nuclear weapons in the world. However, some would argue that the five original signatories, the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, France and China, are using a do-as-we-say, not-as-we-do approach. Many campaigns around the world have focused on nuclear disarmament. For an extension, research the Christian Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament. What do they do and why? Nuclear weapons are not the only weapons of mass destruction. Chemical weapons have been banned since 1993. These are weapons that release deadly chemicals which kill or maim. Equally, there are biological weapons. These release living viruses into the population, food supply or water source. If they enter the human population, they can cause mass death or illness. These too have been illegal for some years. Most religious groups condemn the use of nuclear weapons. Christians would cite Exodus 20, which states, Thou shalt not murder. Although we could imagine a circumstance where war is acceptable, it is difficult to think of one where the use of a nuclear, chemical or biological weapon would be justified. This is because they kill indiscriminately. They do not discriminate between civilian and combatant. However, some Christians would point to the very next chapter of Exodus, which says, If there is serious injury, you ought to take life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. This could be used to justify retaliation using a weapon of mass destruction if one is used against you. The second chapter of the Quran says, Fight in Allah's cause those who fight against you, but do not overstep the limits. Allah does not love those who overstep the limits. Some questions to consider. Who should have nuclear weapons? Nobody? Anybody? Or only some people? And why? Were the deaths of a quarter of a million people in Japan at the end of the Second World War worth it if it ended the war? Does Exodus 21 justify the use of weapons of mass destruction in some circumstances? And how much of an issue are weapons of mass destruction for religious believers today?